All right. Is Medellin, Colombia safe in 2024? How's the food? How's the infrastructure? I, I get these questions almost every day. And in this video, I'm breaking down all the positives, all the negatives, all the things I like and don't like about Medellin, my home for about three years now. All right, the food. And I've got both positive and negative things to say about the food here in Medellin, Colombia, which is kind of a controversial take. So we'll hop into it. On the positive side, all beef is grass fed. That is certainly a positive thing in the United States, which is where I'm from, and in Canada, from what I've heard from my Canadian friends, most of our beef is finished off, finished off with a mix of really bad foods like soy, grubs, and a whole lot of concoctions of medical vaccines and all that kind of stuff. Here in Colombia, they eat grass for their entire lives which is one of the reasons the meat here is much tougher. So it's very chewy, very dense, very different from the meat that we eat there in the United States and a little bit less tasty for that reason. But being grass fed, it is much healthier for you. And another weird thing that doesn't have anything to do with positives or negatives about the food here in Colombia, but paisas, the people from Medellin, really love their meat well done and I've never understood it. My girlfriend loves it. I have to cook her meat much longer than I cook my own meat, which I like red. I don't understand it, I never will, but that's how they like it here. So if you don't prefer another style of meat, whether it's juicy, whether it's raw, whether it's uh, a medium rare, you're gonna get it well done. And also on the positive side, there is so much fresh fruit. I can walk outside of my apartment here in downtown Medellin, pluck a mango or an avocado off a tree and take it home. I don't get that same type of tropical fruit or veggies in North Dakota, which is where I'm from in the United States. And on the other hand, so you got some negatives about the food as well here in Colombia. Colombia uses more pesticides than any other country in the entire world. And you can see that here on this map. So while many people think they're getting the freshest, most organic, most healthy fruit and food in the tropics, the likelihood is not exactly true. And apart from all these pesticides and insecticides and chemicals that they use on Colombian farms, the food diversity isn't quite there. I would say that the cuisine isn't yet something to brag about, but that is changing. More and more world-class chefs, more and more world-class cuisine is coming out of Colombia. Really good restaurants are sprouting up in Bogota and Medellin and Cartagena. And I will say, Bandeja Paisa is also elite, especially after a good workout. All right, moving on to infrastructure. The infrastructure here in Medellin, Colombia is top-notch and in some places better than what I've experienced at home in the United States. To truly understand what the infrastructure is like here in Medellin, you have to go back in history a little bit. In 1991, I believe, Medellin was named the world's most dangerous city. In 2011, Medellin was named the world's most innovative city. And why is that? It's because of the mobility that the city and the department, which is like a state, prioritize for the people of Medellin. To help the poorest people navigate the city and, and be able to work wherever they wanted in the city and versus next door to where they lived, the city introduced a series of metro cables, which are like gondolas, metrocales here. Uh, escalators, seriously, escalators, like outdoor escalators. Trains, buses, and, and a whole metro system to help the mobility of their people. And I've been in metros or trains all around the world, in Paris, in New York, etc. And the metro here in Medellin, Colombia is one, a major source of pride for the paisas who live here. But two, is the cleanest, most polite environment that I've ever seen in a public transportation setting. It's very strange for an outsider, but now that I've lived here for almost three years, it is a godsend. And apart from public transportation, traffic can get pretty bad here, especially because we are in a valley. So during rush hour, either in the morning or afternoon, the best way to get around town is with a moto. So you can zip through the lines and get to where you wanna go much faster than you would in a car. 
All right, moving on to people. I love this topic for many reasons, but first let's get the negative out of the way. The only reason I say there is a negative to the people of Medellin and, and Colombia is if you get mixed in with a bad crowd, which you could say about literally anywhere in the world. I will say it is kind of easy to get mixed in with a bad crowd here in Latin America, so just avoid that when you do come. But apart from the negative, the people here in Colombia and specifically Medellin are some of the warmest, friendliest, most welcoming people I have ever met in my entire life. I, I believe that's because of their more traditional mindset and lifestyle and more conservative approach to family orientation and uh, religiousness and spirituality. I believe that to be true. They're the warmest people in the world. If you want to stay here and, and thrive long term, Medellin Colombia has some of the best startup talent, entrepreneurial talent in Latin America. They have received some of the most funding for startups and Poblado is full of real estate entrepreneurs. But on a more professional level, I have gotten to know some of the most elite entrepreneurs, realtors, artists here in Colombia, local to Medellin. And I really do think that is one of the keys to thriving here long term you have to meet and get to know locals and expats and nomads, the fair share of people from your own culture. This has really become a digital nomad hotspot, and I believe it will be like that for many years into the future. All right, here is one of the negatives of living here in Medellin, Colombia, but also Latin America in general. The locals' relationship with time coming from the United States is very different from mine, but things just move much slower much less efficiently than they do at home. Granted, we do have our fair share of bureaucracy, but here in Latin America, it's on steroids. And apart from general bureaucracy, if you have a girlfriend here or a significant other, just expect them to take a little bit longer, maybe an hour or two hours longer than your gringa girlfriend back home to get ready. And why is that? Here in Medellin, girls take very seriously their physical appearance, and for that reason, they'll change outfits a million times. They'll try on three different styles of makeup, and it just takes way longer than it would in the United States. But I will say this is also a positive thing. Girls are really feminine here, which I personally love. It's a refreshing difference from the sweatpants wearing girls that we might experience in the United States. <laughs> All right, another really great positive about Medellin, Colombia, and again, Latin America in general, is just the general convenience of life. If you come to Latin America with a little bit of money or you're making money here, a luxury lifestyle is way easier to obtain than it was in the United States, Canada, or Western Europe. Apart from first world services like fiber optic internet and really good healthcare being really affordable and accessible here in Colombia, you can get a haircut, a teeth cleaning, a massage, prepared meals, a clean house, a physical therapy session, literally all without leaving your home. All these people are just a WhatsApp message away and through domicilios, they will deliver those services to you so many services that I probably take for granted now after living here for three years are literally at your fingertips. Uh, a WhatsApp away. All right, what many of you probably clicked on this video to hear about, safety. All right, let's get this out of the way right away. If you come to Colombia and you are a sex tourist or a drug addict or a then safety should be a concern for you. If you're not any of those things, like I am not, granted, you still have to take your precautions, but this is a very safe place. In three years here, I have never once felt unsafe. I have never felt my life to be in danger. I am safe here in Medellin. You can look up all the videos about safety here in Medellin you want to get kind of the boilerplate advice and all that kind of stuff. The stuff that you should do, shouldn't do, should wear, should not wear. Things you should do on dating apps, things you shouldn't do. But I'll leave you with one tip that not many people talk about, and that is the Estrato system. So here in Colombia, 
they have six estratos, which are like social classes almost. And in the top social stratus, which is number six, the wealthiest people in Colombia live. People go to Estrato 6 neighborhoods in order to rob. So if you find yourself in an extremely wealthy neighborhood and don't take normal precautions, then you are making yourself a target. If you drop down into a lower stratus system, and I'm not recommending you go to stay in some of the poorest barrios in Colombia, the poorest barrios in Medellin, but if you drop down a little bit and might benefit from a more local feel, more residential feel, you might also be safer because those areas are not targets of crime, of robbery, of any kidnapping, anything like that. But again, I have never felt unsafe in my three years of living all over Medellin, and I don't think you will either. So that is my breakdown of a few different elements of life here in Medellin, Colombia, after living here for almost three years. I don't know if you're going to love it. I have loved it. If you want a more personalized recommendation, DM me on Twitter, email me on my website, and I'd be happy to recommend a few spots, uh, accommodations, restaurants, nightlife, all that kind of stuff. But apart from that, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another video all about building a life of freedom via online business and location independence. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and I can't wait to hear from you.